today we're going to paint this little sunset over the lake. If you're new to acrylic paintings, this is a great painting to start on. I'm going to use these five brushes, a one and a half inch synthetic flat brush, two fan brushes, one stiff and one soft, a quarter inch flat brush, and a small liner brush, and just these five colors. Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Quinacridone Magenta, Cadmium Yellow Light, and White Gesso. Alright, let's jump right into this one. I'm going to start off with a little ultramarine blue, a little bit of gesso, and the first step is usually just going to be to cover the canvas. That's kind of the first thing I do anytime I do a painting. I choose a color that's kind of the base color to that entire painting, and even though I know every bit of it is going to be painted over, I want to cover the canvas in that color. It sort of sets the tone for the painting, um, but it also gives you a nice base layer to paint on top of. Now, eventually what I want the sky to do is be sort of blue on one side, more purple on the right, and some notes of pink in there, but also a lot lighter across the middle for the horizon. Now this one, um, the sky, the background, the water, a lot of this is going to left, be left showing at the end of the painting. So I'm going to make this spend a little more time probably on this background color uh, than I would normally do on a painting that's going to have a lot more foreground cover up. As you can see in the finished product, a lot of this sky is going to show in the water and it's going to be, you know, left untouched at the end of the painting. So I'm going to take a little more time on this. But for this first step, I really just want to get kind of blue on the left, fading a little bit more purple on the right. Really want to work the paint down into the pores of the canvas uh, because this is our base coat. Then we'll come back with some pure gesso across the middle and just using a horizontal stroke, just a light touch, just lighten the very center. Start at the middle and then come back to, down towards the bottom. That's the first of what is going to be several layers. Then I'm going to dry that with a hair dryer. I believe I edited that out, but I did dry this layer before moving on to the next. Now let's look at the colors for the next layer. I'm going to take a, about the same colors, but a lot more intensity. I want to get a, a lot more creamy paint, less water. I'm going to get that blue a little bit darker this time. Maybe just a touch of the magenta, just a little bit. Make it not quite so blue. But much more intense color this time. Now just like before, I kind of want to start on the left, top and bottom equally, fade lighter towards the middle, and do the left side more blue, the right side more purple. And just got to kind of work quickly. I, I sound like a broken record because I say it all the time, but you got to work really quickly when you're using acrylics, especially when you're trying to blend. If you uh, want a little more time for the drying, they do make an um, extender that you can put in it to make it blend a little, dry a little more slowly so it's easier to blend. But we don't, when I use acrylics, I don't use a lot of blending as far as like you would think of with oil paint where you put the two colors on wet and blend them together. What we're doing here is more of a build up blend, it's where you put a layer of color down let it dry put another layer on top and let that dry and then another layer on top of that and each one shows through because acrylic paint has a little bit of transparency to it so each layer will show through the next just a little bit and so you build your blend up from layers rather than trying to do it all wet i think a lot of beginners uh jump in with acrylics and they want to blend colors wet on wet like you see you know people on tv painting with oil paint do and it doesn't work that way, and they get disappointed, uh, get frustrated with the acrylics. You just got to have a little bit of a different approach with acrylic paint. And while that's still somewhat wet, I'm going to put my white in the middle and blend that across, slowly feathering. I'm barely touching the tip of the brush as I do this. Feather it up into the color above, and then we'll start back in the middle and feather it downward. Keeping those strokes horizontal because this is water. 
If you do have a brush stroke, it'll look best if it's horizontal. And I could stop right here. This is a pretty good two-color gradient blend. It looks like a pretty good sky. Um, but I wanted some notes of, of red, pink in there. And so this next layer, I'm going to dry this. This next layer, we'll call it optional if you want to do this. What I'm basically going to do is put another coat of paint on top of this dry paint and then wipe some of it off with a paper towel. And I'll show you how to do that and the reason for that is to uh, allow some of that color to stay behind and it'll show up better in the places where the painting underneath is lighter. The white streaks are then going to be kind of tinted this pink color that I'm going to use. So let's get into that. Again make sure that the paint underneath is completely dry before you start this. But I want to make a color here. I'm going to go in with some of this magenta. A little touch of yellow. I think I wanted it to lean a little more towards a peach pink, if you want to call it that. Um, you got to be careful when you're using yellow in the sky at all. Um, if yellow comes in contact with blue, even if the blue is dry, when you put yellow on top of blue, you get green. I always try to avoid getting green in the sky, any kind of green. Um, the only time I've ever seen green is when there was a tornado coming. Then the sky will turn kind of green. So let's get this pink color. I want to put some gesso in it to get it a little bit lighter. I'm going to put some water in it too. I had a little water in my brush already, but I'm going to put a little bit more water in that. Um, that's pretty close. and get a little bit more magenta. I don't really want it to be lighter than what's under it. A little more magenta. Come back with that. That looks pretty good. Now on this step, you really do have to work quickly. Uh, i got a lot of paint in the brush. I'm going to brush this on. I'm kind of focusing more on the right side because that's where I want more of this pink to kind of stay. I'm going to brush it in, get it brushed into the canvas pretty good. And then uh, just going to take some straight water in my brush. I'm not cleaning the brush out, just adding some water to it. Cleaning a little bit of the paint out, but just mostly picking up some water. And I'm going to brush the other direction and kind of feather in that edge. I know this looks horrible right now, but you got to trust me a little bit on this. Put a little water on there, kind of make it blend that edge. And I cleaned my brush out good that time and came back with straight water so you can see how that's working. So keep that there. Now where the paint is thinner, where the water is in the paint a little bit more, It'll wipe off a little easier, but it's still going to show in the white part of the canvas. The lighter part of the canvas is still going to retain some of that pink. So we got to do this quickly, put it on, smooth it out, make sure the paint is nice and wet. All right, and then I'm going to come back with a paper towel, a dry, a dry paper towel, just a big wad of paper towels, and I'm going to wipe this horizontally. I'm going to make sure. Not too hard either. You just kind of got to gently wipe it. I'm going to go left to right. And you can do as little of this or as much as you want to see what's leaving behind. I'm going to wipe a little bit more. I only want a hint of that pink to let be left showing. But because this is a sky and a reflection of a sky, I need whatever's at the top to kind of match what's at the bottom. So keep that in mind as well. I think that works pretty good right there. So now I want to go back to my one and a half inch flat brush and clean it out completely. I want it completely clean, no paint in it whatsoever, just water, and then even take a paper towel and pull a lot of the water off of it. It's a fairly clean brush and using just the very tip of the brush, just lightly, lightly feathering this across again with the horizontal strokes, smooth that out. Then I'm going to come back with the gesso across the middle again. And working quickly because this is still wet and that's going to give me my light band across the middle that I wanted. And just the same as before, kind of feather it upward and then start back in the middle and feather it downward. Now, each time I do a layer of this paint, it's a little easier to blend because the stuff underneath is showing through. If you tried to get this finished product just from a white canvas with acrylic paint, it would be much harder to do. So there's a, there's a good thing to learn there is how to layer colors, how to really blend your colors by layering. I 
that's probably how I want it to be. Um, just want to make sure that I don't have any hard lines left. And as I said before, we may not always spend this much time on the background. Um, sometimes the background is just one layer of one color and you move on from there. But this one is going to have a lot of this that stays visible at the end of the painting. So we're going to make sure that it looks really good. Now I'm just going to grab my blow dryer and I want to dry this completely to the touch. Make sure it's completely dry and then we're ready to move on to the next step. Alright, for the next step we got to figure out where the horizon is going to be. I'm going to get my ruler and measure from the top of the canvas. I'm going to come down 5 inches. Now this is an 11 by 14 canvas. So this is 5 inches down from the top. And I guess I'll use my ruler just to make a, a line across here. But since this is water and I need this line to be clean and straight, I am going to use some painter's tape this time. Before you do this, you want to make sure that your canvas is completely dry. This blue painter's tape will come off really easily. It won't hurt the paint below. But make sure that it is straight. Press it really firmly at the top edge. Kind of really rub it down into the canvas so the paint doesn't bleed underneath it. Now I'm going to come in here and get some uh, purple color with my little flat quarter inch brush. This is our same sky color, just a little darker. And all I'm really going to do is put some paint on here, then I'm going to move it around. I'm just going to get the paint on the canvas first. The this purple color here, I really want it to kind of transition as it goes across to a slightly different color, but I'm working almost with a dry brush at this point. The paint is on the canvas. I'm just kind of pushing it around. I'm not going to spend too much time making perfect treetops. I go a little more blue as I get to the left side there. I'm not going to spend too much time making perfect treetops. Just want to use a dry, you know, get the paint out of the brush. Just use kind of a dry brush to Kind of give some high spots and some low spots. Keeping the highest point maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe half inch to three quarters. Then I'm actually going to take the paint that's in my brush completely out. And use a paper towel and dry that off completely. And then come back and scrub out the very top edge. And just really make that top edge disappear. This is so far away. You really can't tell what's, you know, I definitely don't want any detail in these trees. Uh, that's one of the things that beginners do is they try to go overboard with details early on. And, and this, this wouldn't look real if it had a lot of detail in it and it was this far away. So you really just want to scrub this out. Only important thing is that the bottom edge is straight and the top edge is fuzzed out and it varies in height. A little higher here, a little lower there. All right, and then I just want to go back across the bottom and make sure I don't have any really weird brush strokes or anything like that. And then using the hair dryer, we'll dry that completely before I pull the tape off. And then when you pull the tape off, you'll see you have created an entire lake full of water. Just like that. Then I'm going to go back to the blow dryer and continue to dry this until it's completely dry. Now you might be able to do this without the tape. Just draw a straight line and stick to it. But anytime there's water, it's pretty important to get a very straight horizontal line there. Now I'm going to come back with my flat quarter inch brush, get a little bit of gesso on it, and then I want to wipe a lot of that paint off. And with a little bit of kind of a dry brush technique. I'm going to use just the tip of the brush and scrub in, I guess, a little bit of a horizon here at the top of the water where the water meets the land. It just gets a little bit lighter. So I get a pretty clean line at the top edge of it, but at the bottom it kind of scrubs out. And I don't want to put too much paint on here for this. I don't want it to be stark white. Just slightly whiter right at the edge there. This is still the furthest away background that you can get, so no detail here. Just trying to clean up that bottom edge and lighten the top edge of the water a little more. 
That's pretty good. I just want to scrub it out. All right. When we're done there, I want to hit it with the blow dryer one more time. Get it completely dry, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Next, we're going to put a little piece of land sticking out here in the foreground. I'm going to measure down from the top of the canvas, this time seven inches from the top. I'm going to mark it on the side and here in the middle. Then I want to go out from the right side nine inches. Nine or so. This doesn't have to be exact. But I do want it to be horizontal. If it goes downhill or uphill, it's going to look weird. So with that in place, I'm going to switch out my fancy palettes here. You notice I'm using these styrofoam plates for palettes. And I've, I've got this on top of what I usually use for my palette, which is a glass top. But the, the plates I wanted to show you are just an easy way to paint at home. You don't have to spend a lot of money on a, um, a palette or anything, you know, any crazy material. You can get these you know, 30 in a pack for a dollar, and they work really well. They keep the paint from drying out too quickly, um, and you can just use as many as you need because they're so inexpensive. Now, I've got my stiff bristle fan brush, and I've made some black, and this is when we mix 50-50 burnt umber and ultramarine blue, we get something that's fairly close to black. I don't like using black straight out of the tube because it's a lot stronger. This gives you a little bit more control over it. And I'm going to use this brush and just kind of lay it down and let the tip of the bristles kind of create some grass at the top there. I want to flip that over because there is a reflection of that same grass. So I just kind of want to mimic from one side to the other. I'm letting the brush do all the work here. There's no brush stroke. I'm just tapping the brush, laying the brush down. The paint is fairly creamy, but if you need to put a little more water in it to get the bristles to separate, you can do that. It's a stiff fan brush, though, and that makes a difference. And if you've got one that's a little more worn out like this one is, it works even better. Sometimes a new one will be too perfect. There, see how that made a... Uh, sort of looks like grass with a reflection of grass. Let me come back and clean it up just a little bit, but remember, whatever you do to the top, you kind of got a mirror at the bottom and that's about all there is to that we will come back and add some more detail to it later but this gives us a foundation to put our trees on so let's go ahead and get that blow dried completely and we're ready for the next step now I'm going to grab my 3-0 liner brush. Now this is a script liner. It really long bristles. I'm going to make some of that black. Get plenty more of that black paint going. Now I warn you about this. A lot of times beginners, when you start doing something that is in any kind of detail, they want to grab a tiny little brush that has like three bristles on it and are kind of intimidated by this long bristle, you know, liner, script liner brush that I use. But I'm telling you, this liner brush makes things go a whole lot smoother when you're trying to paint these long trees and you need it to, the paint to carry a long way. The long bristles hold the paint kind of like a fountain pen. And if you put a good bit of water in it, it really flows, you know, more like ink than it does paint, which is what you want. So I want to make plenty of color. I want to get plenty of water in it. And I'm going to come up with my, this one, like I said, is a 3.0. It's the smallest liner brush that I use generally. Um, I do have some larger ones when I'm doing larger canvases and need to do these kind of trees larger. But this is, you know, loaded up with a lot of paint. This is a good brush for this. And I just want to start at the top and get heavier as I go to the bottom. Just press down harder with the brush. The rule with trees is they get fatter at the bottom. They're always skinnier at the top than they are at the bottom. And I don't want them to be perfectly straight. They're not telephone poles. So... You know, hold the brush way at the back, keep it perpendicular to the canvas, let the very tip of the brush touch, and then as you come down, lay the brush down onto the canvas. Now some of these trees are going to grow together, some are a little thicker, some a little thinner. I don't want any really thick ones though. These are fairly thin, 
uh, tree trunks. I'm not going to do too many either. This little this little plot of land can't hold too many. If you want to do a real small one here in the front. And the trick to this is when you're doing these, you want them to get really thin you know, branches and things, I kind of roll and twist the brush as I'm going. I try to avoid having curvy, wispy, curly lines. I want to have more jagged kind of uh, herky-jerky, you know, type lines on my branches. And you always want to have more water in the brush when you do this. Can't really tell by looking at the plate there, my palette, but I do have a pretty good bit of water in this uh, in this paint. See what I mean? Not really curvy lines. Uh, a lot of times beginners like to paint curls for bristles, for uh, branches. Uh, and I don't want to do too many. Uh, just a few per per tree. I'm going to put just a little bit of leaves on here later. And, you know, if you get carried away with this, you're going to hate it. The more, especially for beginners, you try to paint a whole bunch of leaves, a whole bunch of branches, and you keep trying to do more and more and more to try to fix it, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. I'm going to... Just do a couple little branches here to let my leaves have somewhere to sit. That looks pretty good. I don't want to get I don't want to get too much. Now for the um, for the leaves, I'm going to come back with my soft bristle fan brush, and I got a lot of water in this this time. A lot of water, about fifty fifty. I really want to see those bristles bristles on the brush separate like that. See how that works. If you don't have them separating, get a little more water, beat it on the palette, get them to separate, whatever you need to do to get those open up. Now I'm going to hold that brush perpendicular to the uh, canvas and just kind of tap. And I'm twisting the brush as I go, and it just indicates some leaves. This is a very simple way to paint some leaves, uh, trees. Uh, you could use a sponge for this. To, I think a sponge gets a little too dense too quick, too many leaves too quick. If you don't think about this too much, you just kind of tap them in there quickly, it'll look better. I'm just kind of putting some right at the tops. As I get out towards the end, I'm going to do even fewer. And you just kind of start in a place where, like in the middle of the tree, where they can be darker. And as the bristles of the brush get a little drier, they'll be smaller. And you can go more out toward the edge of the limbs then. But just that quick, a couple minutes, throw those in there really quickly. Now, if you want to dry your branches and your tree trunks first, then when you go to try this, if you don't like them, you can wipe them off and start, you know, dry it and try again. Um, but that's about all I want right there, just about that many leaves. Now I'm going to grab my liner brush again, put a little bit of detail out here towards the end. I'm going to make a, maybe a little bit less paint, but I want to make a little, I guess, a stick sticking out of the water. A branch, whatever this would be, maybe somewhere somebody tied a boat off at one point. The purpose of this is just to have a reflection. So when things reflect, they reflect the opposite of where they were. So I'm going to do an exact opposite of that, the angle and everything, where it looks like there's a mirror laid under it. That, that little bit of detail just adds a little bit of the... Uh, illusion that this is water. You come back and rough up the bottom of these trees a little bit. This is just some some brush or something growing at the bottom of the trees just to make it like a, a little less perfect. Now dry that and we'll move on to the next step. Now this is the fun part. We're going to put some reflections of these trees in the water. I want to start off with my liner brush that I was using earlier. I want to make sure I get plenty of water. I'm just dipping it back in the water and bringing plenty of water in here. This is kind of 60-40 water to paint. Make sure I get it good and wet. And I want to make some reflections of these trunks. Just do this quickly. doesn't matter that it's getting a little shaky there. This is a reflection in the water. But I want these to mirror what's above there. I'm really not making them shaky on purpose. That's just my hand not being steady. But I want them really wet. You can see the paint's really see-through there. That's fine. But very, very wet and work quickly with this. I'm going to make one for each. And again, make it 
completely opposite. If yours is leaning a little to the left, then the reflection will lean a little to the right. Just the trunks for now. One more. Like I said, I'm trying to work really quickly because this has to be really wet. All right, now I'm going back with my fan brush. Lots of water. Just a little bit of the leaves reflecting. Not a whole lot, just enough to make it look like there's a little reflection there. Now here's the fun part. I'm going to take that fan brush with just water. I've washed all the paint out. It's just water. It's got a lot of water in it. And I'm going to hold it flat, and I'm just going to move it side to side across here horizontally really quickly and let it grab the paint that's there and kind of smear it side to side a little bit. Just that much. Don't overdo it. You see how easy that was? Now go ahead and hit that with a blow dryer and let's move on. Now I'm going to go back with my stiff bristle fan brush and get some of this black. It's still got a pretty good bit of water in it. I'm going to do a, a row of grass across the very bottom. This is the foreground of this painting. I'm going to slide the canvas out a little bit so I can get to the bottom of it. And this, it, it's hard to tell in the video, but I'm really not painting on the upstroke, only on the downstroke. So I'm using the bristles, the top bristles of the brush to make the grass tops, if that makes sense. I'm kind of hitting downward. It's a downward stroke that lets the very tip of the bristles touch the canvas first and then pull downward. And I do it quickly. And if the paint is the right consistency and the brush has the right type of tips to it, this kind of does it for you. does all the work for you. I'm going to go across here real quick and put a row of tall grass sticking up here. We go a little taller in some spots, a little, a little less in some. And we're going to come back and do some detail to this later, but that's pretty much it. Now it's time to start putting some detail in here. I'm going to go back with my little flat brush, a flat quarter inch, grab some gesso. I'm going to make a little bit of dark gray here with my black. Just put a little bit of gesso in it. I don't want it to be too, too bright, just a little bit of a contrast to the, the dark black that's down there. I'm going to go back up to my little island or whatever this is out here, peninsula. Just put a few gray rocks in there. This flat brush will help you make some rocks that kind of sit flat. And don't want to do too many. Don't want to think about them too much. Just put a few here and there. And we're going to drag across in spots and kind of create my shoreline. And just that much. Uh, maybe smear that out on the, on the water side. But just that much creates the separation between the land and the water. Do smear those rocks a little bit with my fingers just to soften the edges. And then I may even put a little bit of highlight on some of these trees, just a little, just to give them a little bit of a 3D, you know, roundness to them. If you put just a little on with some water in it, then take your finger and kind of smear it down. It serves to give it a roundness. I'm going to do too much of that, though, just a little here and there. It's mostly a silhouette, so it doesn't need a whole lot of detail. I'm going to come back with my stiff fan brush. I'm going to make a little bit of a dark green. Now my, my grass in the foreground is dry now. But I want to take that black and add just a touch of yellow to it. And that'll give me a really dark green. It's, it's, it's almost hardly even noticeable as green. I don't want to put too much green. The green would clash with the purple uh, in the back if I put too much. But... But with this grass in the foreground being so close, you might get a hint of what color it really is. Now just using that same brush stroke, I'm just going to put some of that greener grass in. Just to cover up kind of the bare spots. You don't need to do too much of that. It's barely even noticeable. But then dry it with the blow dryer, get it completely dry, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now for a few finishing touches. I'm going to go back with this liner brush, back into some of that black, maybe even into some of the really dark green, and just lots of water. I'm going to kind of roll that to a tip, get a good sharp point on that. I'm going to make some individual grasses here. Now this might scare some people, but here's a technique you can learn. If you kind of move the brush in circles, and then just let the tip of the brush hit the canvas only on the upstroke, 
You just keep making circles, but let the brush hit just on the left side of the circle, if that makes sense. And make sure your paint is really more the consistency of ink. It's got to be really watery for this to work. But it will give you these long individual blades of grass that you want. And you can do as many of these as you like, but because we have all of the fan brush blades under there, it'll make it look like you spent the time to paint every single blade of grass individually. The trick is just to move fast and to use thin paint. And it takes a little practice, but you'll get this. Then I'm going to come back and put some little detail on the tips, some little grasses growing, whatever these are, little things that grow off the top of the grass. Finish up the detail and be done with this. I hope you've enjoyed painting this with me. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll see you on the next painting.